Hello students, this lecture is about sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Flower, which is the most beautiful structure of the nature and we use it for the various celebrations, whether it is a social or a cultural functions and it is the most fascinating organ of the flowering plants that is the flower. As you have already studied a structure of a typical flower in your previous class but just to recall again the parts of a flower. Plant after completing its vegetative growth means the root development of the root stem and the leaves they develop or they form the flowers means which is the reproductive part of a plant. The reproductive parts of a plant as you know are the flower, fruit and the seeds. Flower is formed under the influence of a hormone that is the florigen. So, after completing a vegetative growth, a plant develops the flor pri floral pli primordia or a floral buds. That floral buds develop into a typical flower. A typical flower consists of the main four whorls, that is the outermost whorl of the flower is the sepals which is green in color and which protect the internal organs of a flower in a bud condition. Second whorl of a flower is the petals which attract the insects for the pollination. It is followed by the third whorl of a flower which is androsium or a stamen, the male reproductive part of a plant. The next, the innermost whorl of a flower is the gynaecium or a carpal representing the female reproductive whorl or a part and it is the most protected part of a flower. Next we are going to study about the three events of the sexual reproduction in details. Number one, pre-fertilization. Number two, fertilization. And the number three is the post-fertilization. In number one, Pre-fertilization structure and the events, we will study in details about the structure of a stamen. Next is the pistil and next is the pollination. Fertilization means is the double fertilization we will study. And in the third event that is the post-fertilization structure and the events, we will study about the structure of an endosperm, embryo, types of the seed and the fruit. So in this part we are going to study about these contents in details. So or we can say about it is the summary of this chapter and all these headings or subheadings we are going to study in details. Now starting with the structure of a stamen which is a male reproductive part consisting of the two parts a long stalk filament and a two lobes of the anther that is each anther lobe is further having the two theca. So when a stamen is given a transverse cut then it shows the tetragonal structure means at the four corners there is present four microsporangia. 
these microsporangias are surrounded by that is four layers starting from outside is epidermis followed by endothecium next middle layers and tapetum the innermost layer it encloses in it a sporogenous tissue that get differentiated to form microspore mother cells so you have seen in the video i am just repeating again uh starting now with the first part of the chapter is pre fertilization structure and the events in the pre fertilization structure and the events the first structure in the detail you have seen is the structure of a stamen so now it is very important to go through the diagrams of your ncert book so now with the help of this diagram i am repeating again the one you have seen in the video a typical stamen consists of a long stalk called a filament having at the top a bilobed fertile structure called anther and a typical anther is having that is a two lobes for the two is term diathecus and biathecus it is a very important term is diathecus or biathecus and even in the transfer section you have seen it is at the four corners is present the four microsporangia so because of that this condition is also can be called as a tetrasporangiate and these microsporangias get differentiated or later on forms pollen sacs a typical microsporangium consists of the two parts that is walls and the sporogenous tissue sporogenous tissue is surrounded by four wall layers starting from outside is epidermis followed by endothecium and then middle layers these three layers mainly perform the function of protection and they help in dehiscence means to liberate the pollen grains while the innermost layer is the tapetum which is a nourishing layer and its cytoplasm is very dense and the cells show polypoidy and are multinucleate sporogenous tissue at maturity develops into the microspore mother cell or a pollen mother cells these mother cells undergo the process of meiosis means meiosis 1 and 2 to form four microspores these microspores they form or in a exist in a cluster called microspore tetrad microsporangia of the anther at maturity forms pollen sacs and the two microsporangia fuse to form the one pollen sac total will be the two pollen sacs and it will be liberated pollen grains to it from the microspore tetrad microspores get separated and are liberated and these microspores later on get differentiated to form the pollen grain and these pollen grains they developed into the two celled structure by the wall formation a large cell is called the vegetative cell and the small cell is called a generative cell 
microsporogenesis process takes place in microsporangia or a pollen sacs in anther lobes sporogenous tissue get differentiated to form microspore or a pollen mother cells understood mother cells genetic constitution will be to when it will be diploid microspore mother cells me meiosis se microspores ka banna is called microsporogenesis means microspores will be now haploid repeating process of formation of microspores from microspore mother cells by meiosis is called microsporogenesis these microspores they are in a cluster called tetrad when get separated called microspore and then get differentiated to form a pollen grain coming to the detailed structure of a pollen grain pollen grain outer cover is called exine made up of sporopollenin which is highly resistant substance it's organic material chemically it is a fatty substance which can under which can tolerate the extreme conditions or can tolerate the high temperature and not get degraded so can be preserved as a fossils and the point where exine is not present is called or is having a aperture called a germ pore it is the point from where the pollen tube is formed that is about the outer cover exine so many points are there so iske difference mein le agar inner layer is the intine made up of pectocellulose and this pollen grain undergo the process of uh, mitosis to form the two celled structure large cell is called a vegetative cell and the small cell is called generative cell large cell again a difference question is there in the board exam and i am covering maximum points in a difference form so vegetative cell how differ from the generative cell it is can be considered in these points so vegetative cell large hai nucleus bhi large or irregular hai vacuolated and dense cytoplasm hai which is rich in food material while generative cell small hai spindle shape hai float kar raha hai cytoplasm of vegetative cell mein usually pollen grains jo hai wo two cell stage mein liberate ho jate hain but kuch species mein that is a generative cell further undergo one more mitosis to form the three cell structure and that two celled formed from the generative cell will be called as a two male gametes so ab is stage mein jab male gametes ban jate hain to pollen grain kya represent kar raha hai males gamete ko bear karne wala structure kya bolenge usko that is male gametophyte means it is now n structure it is n means haploid structure it is pollens they may brings about the allergies allergy means an an inappropriate response to the certain products means to the pollens especially when pollens are produced in the large number in the wind pollinated plants 
these pollen grains remain in the air and they usually brings about the respiratory disorders that is bronchitis, laryngitis, rhinitis, asthma, etc. Or other symptoms may be is the running nose, sneezing, cough, etc. The major examples which brings about the pollen energy is the congress grass. In addition, from the plants we also get certain that is the uh, pollen products which is used in the cosmetics or may be used as a food supplements and even the pollen honey is quite rich in nutrients like any honey as such. The ability of the pollen grains to brings about the pollination followed by the fertilization is called that a viability of the pollen means ability of the pollen to germinate when they fall on the stigma of the flowers is called the pollen viability means environment me kitne time tak pollen grains active or alive reh sakte hain so that they can bring about pollination ke baad kya that is fertilization Maybe it is in the monocots, rice or a wheat plant may they remain viable, active in environment, in surrounding only for 30 minutes and then it is they are finished or not being able to germinate. They may remain active for the months even in the nature as such in certain families of the plant is Rosa C.A.C. means of the rose, Leguminaceae and Solanaceae families. Pollens can be stored in the pollen banks for further breeding programs to bring about the artificial hybridization or to get the desired products, desired plants of the desired qualities. When the pollen is stored in a liquid nitrogen in a minus 196 degree Celsius. The reproductive part of a flower is pistil, consisting of a three parts, stigma, style and the ovary. Stigma is the receptive part for the pollen grain. Style is the stalk which connects the stigma to the ovary. The basal swollen part is called the ovary which having ovules in it. This is a ovary in a transfer section. In a ovary is present a cavity called ovarian cavity or a locule and it encloses in it the ovules. Ovary may have the one ovule, maybe example is that a mango or may have a many ovules, papaya. Ovules are attached to the ovary with the help of a placenta. Carpal may be free or it may be fused. Free carpal is called apocarpus. The example for the apocarpus pistil is Michelia. While Carpal may be fused, that is called syncarpus, and the example of it is a papaver or that is a poppy plant. In a ovary is present a ovule, and the other name for the ovule is a megasporangium. This megasporangium or ovule when get ripened it forms a seed. A detail a typical structure of a ovule which is usually inverted and that inverted ovule is attached to the ovary with the help of a stalk called funicle or means stalk of the ovule is called funicle. And the point of attachment of the stalk to the ovule is called hilum. 
the covers of the ovule is called integuments the two coverings is outer and inner integuments but these covers are not a continuous cover the point where it is not present is present a pore called a micropyle opposite to the micropyle is present a chelaza integument encloses in it a nutritive tissue called nucellus at maturity in the nucellus one of the cell become large and that is called the megaspore mother cell which later on is going to form the female gametophyte i'm just repeating again a structure of ovule ovule pakne par seed ban jata hai ovule ki stalk ko kya kehte hain funicle point of attachment ko hilum covers ko integument this point pe nahi hai integument called micropyle and opposite to micropyle is chelaza its nutritive parenchyma this tissue is called nucellus so all the terms is i think clear with the help of the diagram also now along with it and it is a very important question important structure so nucellus mein ek cell bada ho jata hai and that is called the megaspore mother cell again whenever we are using the term is mother cell the genetic constitution of it will be 2n or it is diploid मेगास्पोर मदर सेल में मियोसिस से मेगास्पोर्स बनते हैं एंड दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड मेगास्पोरोजेनेसिस रिपीटिंग अगेन द डेफिनेशन मेगास्पोर्स मदर सेल्स में मियोसिस से मेगास्पोर्स द प्रोसेस ऑफ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ मेगास्पोर्स फ्रॉम मेगास्पोर मदर सेल बाय मियोसिस इज कॉल्ड megasporogenesis as you know the end product for the meiosis is the four cells so megaspores formed will be four in number but three of them they degenerate and only the one functional megaspore is going to form the female gametophyte so again this process megasporogenesis along with it is the detailed structure of the female gametophyte or other name for it is embryo sac is very important question and comes to it along with the diagram megaspore mother cell undergo first meiosis one to form the megaspore dyad this is in the second diagram मेगास्पोर डायड में फिर एक मियोसिस टू हुई तो चार सेल्स बन गए तो क्या कहते हैं इसको मेगास्पोर टेट्राड इस टेट्राड्स में से तीन सेल्स डीजेनरेट हो गए और एक फंक्शनल मेगास्पोर है जो बनने जा रहा है नेक्स्ट इज फीमेल गेमिटोफाइट मतलब फीमेल गेमिटोफाइट में एग होगा अभी ओवरी में ओव्यूल्स थे ओव्यूल में मेगास्पोर मदर सेल्स थे और मदर सेल में मेगास्पोर बना है बट वी हैव नॉट कम टू द टर्म इज द एग मेगास्पोर एक जो फंक्शनल रह गया है उसमें तीन माइटोसिस से वो स्ट्रक्चर बनेगा जिसका नाम है फीमेल गेमिटोफाइट और मेच्योर एम्ब्रियो सैक क्योंकि इसके अंदर आएगा क्या फीमेल गेमीट कॉल्ड एग सो लिसन इट वेरी केयरफुल दिस पॉइंट बिकॉज फॉर द क्वेश्चन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यूज ऑल्सो शुड नो वट इज टू बी रिटर्न इफ 
वट काइंड ऑफ द क्वेश्चन इज आस्ट अबाउट एक जो फंक्शनल मैगास्पोर बच गया है तीन डीजेनरेट हो जाते हैं एक फंक्शनल मैगास्पोर में तीन माइटोसिस हुई एक से दो सेल बने सॉरी दो न्यूक्लियस बने दो न्यूक्लियस के बाद फिर एक माइटोसिस हुई तो चार न्यूक्लियाई आ गए चार न्यूक्लियाई में फिर एक माइटोसिस हुई तो एट न्यूक्लियाए बन गए ये न्यूक्लियाइज बन रहे हैं उसके बाद इनकी वॉल फॉर्मेशंस होगा तो वॉल फॉर्मेशंस में तीन तीन न्यूक्लियाई कम्स टू द एंड एंड वन न्यूक्लियाई फ्रॉम ईच एंड कम टू लाई इन द सेंटर एंड दे फॉर्म्स अ वन सेल ओनली द सेंट्रल वंस सो फाइनली सेवन सेल्स बनते हैं जब वॉल फॉर्मेशन होती है बट न्यूक्लियाई एट थे ये सेवन सेल्ड एट न्यूक्लियट स्ट्रक्चर को बोलते हैं मेच्योर एम्ब्रियो सैक एज यू नो ऑलरेडी टेकन अप चार मेगास्पोर्ट से तीन डीजेनरेट हो गए थे एक फंक्शनल के अंदर ये माइटोसे से ये प्रोडक्ट बना है ये स्ट्रक्चर बना है इस टाइप की डिवेलपमेंट को बोलते हैं मोनोस्पोरिक डिवेलपमेंट तीन सेल जो चेलाजा की तरफ है उसको बोलते हैं एंटीपोडल्स और तीन सेल्स जो माइक्रोपाइलर एंड की तरफ है इसको बोलते हैं एग एपरेटस विच इज मेड अप ऑफ टू सिनर्जिट्स और द हेल्प सेल्स हैविंग द फिली फॉर्म अपरेटर्स विच हेल्प इन रिसीविंग द पोलन ट्यूब एट द टाइम ऑफ अ पोलन जर्मिनेशन एंड वन इज एग लार्ज सेंट्रल सेल इज हैविंग द पोलर न्यूक्लिया दिस पोलर न्यूक्लिया लेटर ऑन फ्यूज टू फॉर्म अ टू एंड स्ट्रक्चर टू एंड सेल कॉल सेकेंडरी न्यूक्लियस पॉलिनेशन इज द ट्रांसफर ऑफ द पोलन ग्रीन्स टू द स्टिग्मा पॉलिनेशन इज ऑफर टू टाइप्स that is a self pollination and a cross pollination in a self pollination the transfer of the pollen grains from anthers to the stigma of the genetically similar flower it is so it means it help in maintaining the purity of a race as well as superiority but it may brings about the degeneration of characters means no variations is there in a self pollination self pollination is of a two types number one is autogamy auto name indicates within the same flower it is pollen grains of the same flower and the same stigma it is especially it is common in cleistogamous flowers in which the flowers they remain closed cleistogamous closed flowers example viola oxalis commelina arachis in these plants means flower remain closed so it's a stigma as and the anthers or the pollen grains they remain very close to each other and definitely 100% the seed will be formed that is in the first case in the second case that is the casmogamous flower in which the flowers get open stigma or anthers get exposed that is in which the pollination is not very 
sure it is autogamy in gitanogamy the transfer of pollen grains one from one flower to another flower of the same plant repeating of the same plant but in the cross pollination the two different plants is required means transfer of the pollen grains from one plant to the another plant definitely some biotic agent or abiotic agent is required for it in cross pollination abiotic or biotic agents is required for the transfer of pollen grains abiotic agents may be by wind or may be by water and biotic means by the living organisms may be by insects birds or bats etc so students in this topic although is general but important the type of the questions can be asked like this what is the difference between the anemophilous or entomophilous flowers or what are the important characteristics features of the anemophilous or entomophilous flowers these are the type of the questions which has already come in the board exam means i am repeating again characteristics pooch sakte hain kisi bhi type ka aur differences pooch sakte hain kisi ka bhi kisi ke sath to ek agents of the pollination a may be abiotic or biotic abiotic agents required for the cross pollination is may be by wind or a water and the biotic agents may be by insects birds or the bats etc coming to the first is the characteristics of the wind pollinated flowers or the anemophilous flowers wind is the most common biotic abiotic agent the characteristics of the flowers which are pollinated by the wind is usually flowers are small without nectar or a scent usually white in color male flowers number is more and the stamens usually are exposed with the long filaments and they produce a large number of pollen grains and the pollen grains are very light and non sticky because they are moved with the air currents and a lot of wastage is also in this process while in the case of a female flowers female parts stigma is usually hairy or feathery and flowers usually exist in the form of uh, inflorescence in which in a single ovary is present a one ovule can see in the diagram in the grasses which is very common the white compact inflorescence spike of spikelets etc is there one more example for it can be considered is the corn cob that is commonly called as a challi or a bhutta you used to eat उसमें जो ब्राउन कलर के धागे हैं दैट रिप्रेजेंट इज द टेसल्स विच इन टर्न रिप्रेजेंट द स्टिग्मा एंड द स्टाइल दैट इज द मेन करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द विंड पॉलिनेटेड फ्लावर्स सेकेंड इज द वॉटर पॉलिनेशन वॉटर पॉलिनेशन इज नॉट वेरी कॉमन बट इट इज may be above the water or below the water the example for above the water is valley cinerea example for below the water pollination is hydrilla and zoestra or the sea grasses
in the case of uh, valley scenario usually the female flower stalk become long at maturity and it comes to lie at the surface of a water and in the meantime it is the male flower they produces the anthers which also come to lie on the surface of water so then the pollination takes place above the surface of a water it is called also as in a apihydrophily while in the case of uh, hypohydrophily pollination is within the water the characteristics of the flowers will be the same like that of uh, anemophilus flower they won't be colored no scent no nectar but in the case of aquatic plants the pollen grains usually they have a coat or a cover of a mucilage which will prevent its decaying stigma is usually long and sticky but this hydrophily is not very common it is just found in the approximately 30 genera of the monocots even the aquatic plants whether whether it is a water hyacinth or a water lily the pollination is not by the wind by the water instead instead even in the aquatic plants the pollination is by insect or a wind but water is only the medium in the case of uh, lower plants only that is uh, algae bryophytes or pteridophytes in which the male gamete is called as a sperm they need a uh, water for the movement for fertilization it is coming to the next is the characteristics of the entomophilus flower which is pollinated by the by the insect understood these flowers will be very large colorful attractive and they produce a odor that may be it is a pleasant or a foul pollen grains are usually sticky because of the pollen kit a sticky substance even stigmas are sticky because that is the pollen grain has to stick back to the back to the back of the any insect and then they will transfer to that to the female part of a flower so when the insect who visit the flower get the nectar or the edible pollen that is considered to be an a floral reward for the insects but the insect who visit the flower get the pollen and nectar but do not brings about the pollination can be considered or called as a pollen or a nectar robbers means unhone chura liya pollen aur nectar ko but kya nahi kiya pollination nahi kiya kuch plants mein to dono ka insect ka aur flower ka bahut important mutualistic aur symbiotic relationships hain ki dono ka life cycle hi nahi complete hota ek dusre ke bina the example for it is is the amorphophyllus which is the tallest which is having the tallest flowers and which provides the space or the place to live to lay the eggs by the insects another one more example is there of a yucca plant in which the moth visit lay their eggs and uh, get in turn that is a pollination is brought about by the moth and it is a very safe place for the development of their eggs the larva of the moth comes out when it is the seed is to be formed next is ornithophily or that is the bird pollination by the birds birds which brings about the pollination are usually small in size with a long beak 
and a beautiful small size birds are sunbird or the hummingbirds and the characteristics of the flowers will be the same just like any antimophilous flowers attractive colorful scented etc